na kuweka neno ndani yao kwa ajili ya kutuhudumia asante kwa kwa ajili ya watoto wako ambao unakusanya jioni ya leo kwa ajili ya kutuhudumia Mungu tunakushukuru asante Mungu pia thank you living god kwa ajili ya uaminifu wako uaminifu wako your faith una ndugu milele na hata remains forever tumekusanyika mahali hapo we gather in this place tunaamini uwepo wako we believe in you tunaamini uwepo wako we believe in you tunakiri jioni ya leo we confess this hakuna mungu mwingine there is no other god being good in heaven duniani na hata chini ya dunia hii anastahili kwa tunakupa shukrani zote kwa ajili ya convention hii for this convention kwa siku hizi tatu for the three coming days tegemea kukuona wewe we expect to Ukitudumia see ministering katika nguvu in power na uweza and might now tukufu wote and all the glory kapate kukurudia wewe is back to you katika jina la Yesu in Jesus name wote tuseme amen everyone says piga makofi kwa Yesu Bwana asifiwe sana praise the lord haleluya mc Okay. Asante sana. Asante Thank you sana, very Mr. much. Shangali. Kwa uh, uh, Shangali. Shughuli hiyo ya wimbo pamoja na na ibada uh, for the ya song maumbi. and uh, the worship and prayer. Asante sana. Kwa hiyo kipengele kinachofuata uh, the next session ni utambulisho. We'll have introductions. Na kazi hii amepewa MC mwenyewe. Uh, responsibility of the to do the introductions. Asante sana. Naomba ni anze na kumalizia na msemaji mkuu. I will start and end with uh, the main speaker. Asante sana. Ah uh, kushukulia kwenu kabisa ni uh, Professor Elisante. To your right is Professor Elisante. Yeye ni mwalimu ama mkufunzi lecturer katika chuo kikuu cha Dar es Salaam. He is a lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam. Katika idara ya chemical engineering and chemical engineering. Ah uh, naifuata next ni uh, ni mruke kidogo mna Nigeria nitafuata baadaye naenda uh, na Francis Kinabo. I will skip that then I'll go to engineer Francis Kinabo. Asante sana. Yeye anafanya na children pastor Calvary Temple TAG Church Arusha. Uh, he is with the TAG Church in Arusha na katibu wa Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International Tanzania. Uh, he is the general secretary of uh, Full uh, Gospel Men Fellowship in Tanzania. Asante sana ni afisa ali staff. He is a retired civil servant. Ah uh, onaitwa facility engineer wa United Nations. Sasa hii facility engineer translation yake Uh, tunakwama kidogo hapo engineer wa miliki ah uh, sawa sawa alikuwa ni, alikuwa anafanya kazi kama engineer wa miliki katika uh, shirika la umoja wa mataifa na ni mkulima he is a farmer uh, ni mwalimu katika chuo cha Arusha Technical College ah uh, he is also a lecturer in is a former teacher lecturer at Arusha College Sana sana katika department engineering pia civil engineering in the same department of civil engineering Ameole, Ameoa he's married na ana watoto watatu I with three children Sana sana thank uh, you very much Okay tena nije kwa Brian Kalinga I will skip all the way to Brian Kalinga uh, Brian Kalinga is an IT na digital media consultant Kiswahili chake hapo kidogo mnisamee 
Um, he is a registered IT profession in computer security and a sci cryptography. Na cryptography, whatever that means. <laughs> Usalamu wa mtandawa. Tumambo wa cybercrime wa ya mde. Inafanana kidogo. Sante sana. Uh, amefanya kazi katika nchi nyingi za Afrika. He's worked in several African nations. Na katika mambo ya financial institution. Uh, and also in financial institution. Kwenye telemax, telematics in industry. Uh, kwenye uo uwanda wa telematics. Sasa, uh, is now a public servant of the United Republic of Tanzania. Sasa ni fanya kazi wa umma wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Okay, Brian is happily married for 10 years now. Ah, uh, mehoa kwa miaka 10 to one beautiful lady anaitwa Lydia, kwa mke mmoja ambaye anaitwa Lydia. And he is blessed to be a father of three children. Na amebarikiwa kuwa na watoto watatu. He is passionate about the subject of purpose and digital transformation. Ana shauku kubwa maeneo ya kidijitali na kuleta mabadiliko haya. Asante sana. Sasa niende kwa Eric Ewo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct sir. Can you just wave? Eric Ewo Ewo is an astute entrepreneur. Ah uh, huyu ni mjasiri wa mali. Eh uh -huh. ni philanthropist pia. Ah uh, pia ni mpiganaji and a christian faithful na ni muamini mkristo muaminifu ana national diploma katika sheria yes he has a diploma in law na bachelor ya sayansi katika sociolojia and a bachelor in sociology he ana masters pia master's degree katika business and administration ana ile uzamili katika Masuala ya usimamizi wa biashara. Asante. And he has attended several seminars, amehudhuria seminar nyingi na workshop nyingi na courses mbalimbali. He has attended several seminars, courses and such. He is the CEO of Flamebest Energy and Gas Limited. Ah, yeye ni mkurugenzi mkuu wa hiyo taasisi iliyotajwa. Pia ni mkurugenzi wa Base Ox Integrated Services Limited. Uh, na pia ni mkurugenzi wa hiyo taasisi nyingine pamoja na makampuni mengine among others ana makampuni mengi and he got several uh, companies uh, he is happily married to Dr Mrs Victoria Eric Owo uh, Ewo ame ana mke wake anaitwa Dr Ewo na wana they are blessed with three children na wamebarikiwa kuwa na watoto watatu Asante sana. Uh, sasa ni seme kuhusu sa architect Dr. Chukweme Okereke. Did I pronounce correctly? Asante sana. Uh, he is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Ah, ye yupo kwa wale wa fellow wana chama wa sanifu majengo yes. sante sana exactly na he is a lead consultant ah uh, lakini pia yeye hutoa ushauri kwenye kampuni ya nice consults ah uh, katika kampuni hiyo ya nice consult iko port harcourt nigeria which is at port harcourt in nigeria he is a knight of methodist church nigeria ah uh, yeye ni kiongozi wa Kanisa la Kimethodisti kule Nigeria. Asante sana. He is a national director ni mkurugenzi wa kitaifa and currently serves as a national as the national committee chairman. Ah na pia ni mwenyekiti wa ile kamati ya kitaifa. Yeah, East and Southern African Operations for Full Gospel Business for Full Gospel Business Fellowship International Nigeria. Yeah. Full Gospel Men's Fellowship kule Nigeria. Santi ndefu kidogo. Na mwisho kabisa sio kwa kwa muhimu and last ni, but not the least ni Mr. Okeye Oduze. <laughs> Mr. Okeye Oduze yeye ni IT or media consultant. 
anajihusisha na masuala ya kiteknolojia ni field representative wa full gospel Nigeria ah, lakini mwakilishi pia wa full gospel fellowship kule Nigeria asante ni member wa airlift team lakini pia ni yeye ni sehemu ya hiyo team ya airlift ndio ndio na ameo ameoa na ana watoto watatu he is married and they are blessed with three children asante sana sasa mzungumzaji wetu mkuu nitamtamka kwa jina tu na nitamuomba apunge kwa sababu kabla haja kuja kuzungumza nitatoa maelezo I will only mention the name of our main speaker he'll only wave but later I'll be giving more details about him Asante sana mzungumzaji wetu mkuu our main speaker ni Reverend Dr. Gerard Ole Nguyaine Asante sana sasa mengine hayo tutazungumza wakati anapanda kuzungumza ana the rest will be spoken when he will be coming to speak thank you asante sana uh, tumemaliza kipengele cha introduction i will finish that introduction section Na, sasa tunakwenda kwenye uh, neno la ukaribisho welcome not nini kiswe chake na ninamkaribisha engineer Francis Kinabo how can like to call upon engineer Francis Kinabo atupitishe kwenye nafasi hii for the welcome note uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen habari za jioni mabibi na mabwana uh, it's my pleasure to stand before you Uh, ni heshima yangu kusimama mbele yenu and give you a welcoming note na kuwapa neno la ukaribisho yesterday we had a very nice banquet uh, jana tulikuwa na jio uh, it's a banquet ladies of the fellowship banquet na dhifa nzuri sana ya wanawake and we were blessed very much na tulibarikiwa sana now uh, this capacity of welcoming you Uh, sasa nafasi hii ya kuwakaribisha was supposed to be conducted by our national president engineer John Jao. Ah uh, ilipaswa ifanywe na rais wetu wa kitaifa engineer Njao but unfortunately could not make it to Arusha lakini kwa bahati mbaya hakuweza kufika hapa Moshi so I'm wearing his shoes kwa hivyo nimechukua nafasi yake uh, but the shoes for engineer Njao are very big lakini viatu vyake kwa kweli ni vikubwa sana kwangu so I won't fit there na wala siwezi kutosha pa. However, hata hivyo by God's grace uh, kwa neema ya Mungu I will mention a few things. Uh, nitataja mambo machache. Um, we are blessed to have uh, uh, this convention here in Moshi. Uh, tumebarikiwa kuwa na kongamano hili hapa Moshi uh, in this year of 2023. Uh, mwaka huu wa 2023. Uh, in this convention katika kongamano hili we are going to have many speakers tutakuwa na wasemaji wengi and uh, they will be mentioned as we, the convention rolls on na tutakuwa tunawatambulisha kwa kadri muda unavyoendelea the theme of this convention uh, mada kubwa au dhima ya is, kongamano hili is conquering the, fa- the summit uh, ni kufikia vilele uh, this has been taken from the epistle of romans uh, hii imetolewa katika kitabu cha waraka wa warumi uh, in the eighth chapter ile sura ya nane this 37 however to get a better perspective ila ili uweze kuielewa kwa ubora zaidi you can read from the 36 to the 39 unaweza kusoma kuanzia mstari wa 36 hadi ule wa 30 mentioning briefly lakini kitaja kwa ufupi the bible talks about the uh, i mean the problems and worries we are having in our life a Biblia inasemea masumbuko na changamoto shida ambazo tunakuwa nayo but we get an assurance lakini ili kuwa na uhakika that in all the things kwamba katika mambo haya yote we will conquer to the summit tutashinda na tutafika kileleni uh, in the uh, in this convention katika kongamano hili uh, when you, you you will hear a lot of uh, messages which will encourage you utasikia jumbe nyingi ambazo zitakutia moyo so that you can understand ili uweze kuvumilia what is happening in the world yale yanayoendelea duniani in the media nowadays uh, katika vyombo vya habari siku za leo you can read and hear 
Unaweza kusoma na kusikia. A lot of things which are not are discouraging. Vitu vingi ambavyo vinavunja moyo. Today you hear the war in Ukraine. Leo unasikia vita kule Ukraine. Tomorrow you hear the war in Gaza and Israel. Kesho unasikia kwa habari ya vita kule Gaza na Israel. To withstand these things, ili kuvumilia mambo haya, you need to be enabled by the Lord. Unapaswa kuwezeshwa na Bwana. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, full gospel businessmen uh, e fellowship ya full gospel is the right ume, is the right forum ndio uanda sahihi which can and, and power you ambao unaweza kukuwezesha spiritually kiroho financially kifedha eh, physically na kimwili uh, to uh, uh, with, with stand what is happening in the world ili uweze kuvumilia yale yanayoendelea duniani uh, In this convention katika kongamano hili as I've said before kama nilivyotangulia kusema we are going to have many speakers tutakuwa na wazungumzaji au wanenaji wengi who, who will take us in different areas ambao watatufundisha katika maeneo tofauti which will enable us ambao itatuwezesha uh, to be better people kuwa watu bora in our life katika maisha yetu uh, We would like to mention a few of them. Tungependa tuwataje wachache miongoni mwao. Uh, uh, some of them have already arrived. Baadhi yao wameshawasili. You have been introduced. Yane, ah uh, umeshatambulishwa. And from tomorrow and the day after, kesho na siku inayofuata, we'll have Professor Lakiona, tutakuwa na Professor Lakiona, we'll have Dr. Uh, Alan Stevenson ah uh, tunaye Dr Alex Livingston will have uh, um, Cecilia Moshi tutakuwa na Cecilia Moshi and others na wengineo let me take this opportunity to thank you be, uh, for, uh, before ah uh, nichukue nafasi na shukuru kwanza uh, for the acceptance kwa kukubali to have a slot of Ku, their time uh, kuchukua muda wenu to come and minister to us kuja na kutuhudumia uh, let me also not forget Let me not also forget Pia ni sisahau uh, the our brothers from Nigeria and guzetu kutoka Nigeria who for more than 14 years ambao kwa zaidi ya miaka 14 have been coming to encourage us wamekuwa wakija kututia moyo the outcome has not very are not been very encouraging to them uh, matokeo hayajakuwa yakiwatia moyo sana but this has not discouraged them lakini hawajavunjika moyo they have continued to come year after year wameendelea kuja mwaka baada ya mwaka mwingine hoping that kwa matarajio kwamba uh, one day ipo siku this, this ministry will grow roots huduma hii itakuza mizizi yake and extend also to other countries which are surrounding us na kufikia nchi zingine au mataifa mengine yanayotuzunguka so once again let me still say thank you to them mara nyingine tena ni washukuru sana uh, my fellow tanzanians uh, ndugu zangu wa tanzania we need to hear the words from the book of romans tunapaswa tuyasikilize maneno katika kitabu cha warumi chapter 13 verse 11 13 mstari wa 11 where we are told that ambapo tunaambiwa kwamba uh, the time of slumbering is enough wakati wa kulala umeisha so let's wake up kwa hivyo tuamke because Jesus is coming very soon kwa sababu Yesu yuaja hivi punde and we don't know the time hatujui wakati on the day au siku when he will be coming atakaporudi it is going to be explained later itaelezewa baadaye the purpose of full gospel in ta, uh, the, the vision of full gospel in Tanzania maono ya full gospel hapa Tanzania but one of them lakini moja wapo is to bring people back to god ni kuwarudisha watu kwa mungu so i request everyone who is here ninamuomba kila mmoja aliyepo hapa to take these two few days achukue siku hizi chache Uh, to welcome uh, your colleagues or your friends wakaribishe wenzako au rafiki zako in some of these banquets katika baadhi ya vifa hizi which have been organized to reach different groups ambazo zimeandaliwa ili kuwafikia makundi tofauti so that they can hear the word of god ili waweze kulisikia neno la mungu and testimonies na shuhuda and which can enable them to come to the knowledge of jesus christ ambazo zitawawezesha kufikia ufahamu wa Yesu Kristo. Let me take also this opportunity. Nichukue pia fursa hii. To thank you who have 
take your time kukushukuru wewe ambao umetumia muda wako to come and 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 and, and attend this teaching kuja na kuhudhuria vikao hivi i can assure you that ni kuhakikishie kwamba by the time we finish this convention wakati tunamaliza makongamano haya will never be the same hautabaki kama ulivyo so relax kwa hivyo ujisikie huru tighten your belt funga mkanda wako as the plane is taking off ili ndege inapoanza safari to take you to the summit ikupeleke pale kilele thank you very much asante sana Uh, thank you very much engineer Francis Kinabo. Ana kushukuru sana mhandisi Francis Kinabo for your wonderful encouraging words. Ah kwa maneno yako mazuri ya kutia moyo. Asante. Thank you. Uh, now we move on with our schedule. Ah tutaendelea na ratiba yetu. I understand that we have got two singing teams. Ah ninafahamu tuna vikundi viwili vya uimbaji and the next uh in our agenda is music interlude asante so i would like to give the opportunity for both of these groups to sing ningependa nitoe fursa ya makundi haya mawili kuimba tukianza we start with the uh, what's the name of the group eh? el shadai we start with el shadai choir hatutaanza na choir el shadai give us one or because of time just to be one 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 beautiful song ah tutaomba kwa sababu ya muda mtupe wimbo mmoja maridadi and then when you are done our praise and worship will also give us one beautiful song kisha haitimisha nao wale wakusifu na kuabudu nao watatupa wimbo mmoja before we identify the newcomers kabla hatujawatambua wageni santeni sana
Thank you. Thank you very much. And I understand that some of us, or most of us, would have loved if they had another one more song. Asante ni sana na elewa wengi wetu tunge tamani kama wange kuwa na wimbo mwingine mmoja. But because of time, lakini kwa sababu ya muda, tuna tuna kwepa hiyo. Uh, we have to just agree with that. Okay, yes, and son. Uh, before the praise team takes over, uh, kabla ya team ya ku I would like to take this opportunity to identify men of God, servants of God. I am told you have uh, bishops and pastors in the room. And, and anyone who is serving in a similar would you please stand? Would love to recognize you. Stand, sir. Wonderful. Coffee, coffee. Let's give them a hand. You are, you are, we are very happy to have you. This is very encouraging. It gives us some energy to keep going. Thank you very much. Now, uh, praise team. Uh, team ya kusifu. Uh, for interruption again. Um, I understand we have some some new visitors or newcomers. Now, because we would really love to know them, I want to hand them over the mic. mic. Thank you. I, I think this exercise will take place uh, at a later point. So, uh, back to the praise and worship team. Karibuni Karibuni sana. Hallelujah. Maybe can we all stand up and make it a little bit jubilant? Moja. We come Zaidi sana Kilimanjaro Piga tena kwa chiri ya Yesu Hallelujah Kwa ya tunamambia tumeruni kwa kushukuru Yesu Piga makofi ya chutene Kwa na Nimeruni tena Yesu Na kushukuru Wengine sijui Ila mimi wana Nimechua ube Wanda ni meruni tena Yesu na kushukuru Mengine sijui ila hili wanda Mechua ube ni tene ya wanda Wanda ni meruni tena Yesu, Yesu na kushukuru Wengine sijui ila mimi bwana nimejua umeni tende Hakuna kile kizuri kwa Yesu tende Eh Hakuna kwa Yesu Yesu, Yesu, na kushuku 
Kuchelewa, as the master of ceremony, uh, kama I would have taken the liberty uh, to ask them kuwaomba. to do one more song. Wimbo wimbo Lakini, Let's proceed. Now, the next item is uh, 
identification of first uh, timers ah tungependa kuwatambua wale ambao ni mara ya kwanza wao kuwepo and we want to welcome them to our group na tungependa kuwakaribisha katika kundi letu now may i pass on this role to professor elisante ani tuwe nafasi hii kwa professor elisante who is going to take up that role ambaye atatuchukua nafasi hii Uh, thank you very much MC. Ah uh, nakushukuru sana MC. Let me also take this opportunity. Nichukue nafasi hii to thank all of you who have attended. Ah uh, niwashukuru wote ambao mmehudhuria from abroad Nigeria and other countries. Ah uh, kutoka nje Nigeria na mataifa mengine and all the regions of Tanzania. Ah uh, na mikoa yote ya Tanzania. And even those from Moshi. Na hata wale ambao wametoka hapa hapa Moshi. My slot here is only 4 minutes. Ah uh, nina dakika 4 peke yake. And my job is very simple. Na kazi yangu ni rahisi sana. Just to introduce and welcome uh, kutambua na kukaribisha those who want to join our family for the mara ya kwanza kuungana na familia hii yetu. You have heard about the introduction about full gospel. Ah uh, umesikia habari za full gospel and I'm sure everybody knows what and fahamu what uh, full gospel is uh, full gospel ni nini so i'd like to now take this opportunity kwa hivyo ningependa nichukue fursa hii to ask those who are coming for the first time ah uh, niwaombe wale ambao ni mara ya kwanza to please stand up tafadhali wasimame yeah thank you thank you thank you sana so please Don't uh, sit until I tell you to sit down. Ah, tafadhali msiketi mpaka nitakapowaomba mketi. Yeah, so as the guests in our house, ah uh, hapa katika nyumba yetu hii, would like you to receive the three things. Ah, uh, tungependa mpokee. Ah, first is the handshake. Ah, uh, kwa salamu ya mkono and the hug. Lakini pia kumbotiwa au hug. And then we are going to give you a gift. Alafu tutakupa zawadi. After that you can sit down. Na baada ya hapo unaweza kuketi. So I welcome Ashas to uh, please come forward. Ashas and members of the committee. Please rumu na wale watu wa ile kamati yetu tafadhali. Uh, make sure we are going don't please Ashas uh, wait until wait until I say go. Ah wahudumu subirini mpaka niseme yeah. tufanye hivyo. I know maybe other ushers only few ushers. Na so fahamu labda wapo wahudumu wachache. Yeah. So you just uh, make a handshake and you hug the person and you give the gift. Kwa hivyo msalimie, mkumbatie, mpe yeah. zawadi. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. So for those who have received for those who have received the new wave ambao wamepokea that book explains about uh, F- FGB MFI uh, kitabu hicho kinaelezea So please read it carefully. Tafadhali kisome kwa makini. Me I read it more than three times. Mimi nimeshakisoma zaidi ya mara tatu. And every time I want I still find something to read. Na kila ninapokisoma ninapata jambo jipya la kusoma. So it will explain to you the step by step guidance. Ah uh, itakuelezea hatua kwa hatua of the STB ya FGB and the divisions yake of the founder of FGB MFI ya waanzilishi wa FGB yeah so uh, the opportunity to read it later kwa hivyo tafadhali utumie muda uisome baadaye and welcome to our family karibuni sana katika familia yetu let's clap hands for all our newcomers first to wape mikono wa wageni oh thank you you can get seated mnaweza kuketi Thank you thank you very much professor Lisante Asante sana professor Lisante for um, this wonderful uh, exercise of letting us know who is here or hearing about full gospel for the first time Kwa zoezi hili zuri la kutusaidia kufahamu ni nani yuko hapa kwa mara ya kwanza 
Thank you. Asante sana. Now, I said earlier that nilisema hapo awali that the national president a uh, rais wetu wa kitaifa uh, engineer John Jao a uh, engineer John Jao could not make it hakuweza kuwepo so he is in Dar es Salaam Dar es Salaam but because of his love for full gospel lakini kwa sababu anaipenda full gospel but also because of his love uh, for God na kwa sababu pia anampenda Mungu he sent us a message ametutumia ujumbe he, via a video clip a uh, ujumbe wa video so the video was recorded na hume recordiwa and now it's like we are with him right from Dar es Salaam na inafanana kama ambayo tuko naye moja kwa moja kutoka Dar es Salaam san san can the IT now proceed to stream the video basi wale wa IT watusaidie kutuonyesha video hiyo We welcome all members of Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship in International in Tanzania and all the, all, all the foreign delegates who have come here, among whom are uh, our precious brothers from Nigeria who have been supporting this fellowship for many years. They've been coming to Tanzania almost in every single convention in the past few, few years, tirelessly and giving a very great support to the fellowship and encouraging the members to continue with this work. I would like to use this opportunity to also express my appreciation to all the members of the Focus for Business International in Tanzania for working diligently throughout the year in preparing this convention. I would like to, uh, to extend special appreciation to delegates from Nigeria to pass our appreciation to the Nigerian leadership for sending them to, to, rep to represent Nigeria in this convention. I believe many things are going to take place, take place and many messages which, which will encourage the member about conquering the summit. Eh? Conquering the summit will be of great, great encouragement to the fellowship in the end of the day. My dear brothers, do not uh, accept leaving this conversation without taking all that which you are going to learn about conquering the summit so that you can continue excelling as you move along with the rest of the year till next national convention which we are expecting God willing will be in Arusha next year. I would also like to emphasize in this particular convention for members to continue uh, raising more chapters because it, it, it is our vision to reach more than 2,000 chapters in a few years time. And I believe when it comes to conquering the summit, they are going to see how they are going to conquer 
this, uh, this goal of 2000, more than 2,000 chapters in a few years. We should not give up. And I would like to encourage the members to, 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 to raise members from all races, including members who are going to form the international chapters in this particular time. Also, not hesitating to increase the number of executive chapters in this country. Let us remember many members and leaders they are going to, 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 to form future, they are going to be future leaders of this country. When we are talking about uh, recruiting members, I would like also to emphasize the importance of recruiting young generation chapters. We need as many generation chapters in this country as, as possible to take over the fellowship in the future. Remember also according to our vision and our goal, we want to, re to reach even the villages. Even according to what we plan to have chapters in uh, in every single city, cities, every city and, and, and town. As you move along all the main roads, the roads con connecting the, the the regional the, the connecting the regional headquarters in the country. That that is our vision. That that's how, that's how we're supposed to move. I would like to use this over to remind the members and the, the leaders. Now we have some regions who are who, who which are not having a chapter at all. A number of regions. We are going to highlight highlight them during the convention, during the leaders meeting, so that you can know, you can take note, so that you can see how you can, which region you can commit to move on to in, in, for the next for the next few years. Otherwise, otherwise, again, I just want to express my appreciation. Say thank you very much. I think uh, we we are going to learn a lot to which a lot to enable us to to, to, to reach two thousand the, the goal of two thousand chapters in a few years if you work as one powerful team. Otherwise I just again want to say please you use the, the all that you are going to learn from the delegates from the international delegates and what we are going to share is a fellowship during the meeting to achieve our goals. our national uh, executive sends us to Tanzania. Na sisi huja kwa sababu uh, ile kamati kuu ya kitaifa huwa inatutuma huku Tanzania. But we have somebody who is in charge of international operations in Nigeria. Ah uh, tunaye anayehusika na masuala ya kimataifa kule Nigeria. The way we come to Tanzania na namna ambavyo sisi huja Tanzania before we came here, we came from Kenya. Uh, kabla ya kuja hapa, tulitoka Kenya. So we have a group that goes to East Africa and South Africa. Uh, huwa tunakundi ambalo hutembelea Afrika, mataifa ya Afrika mashariki na kusini. We have other, another team that goes to um, West Africa and North Africa. Uh, tunakundi lingine ambalo huenda uh, magaribi na kaskazini. We have a group that goes to uh, United States of America and Canada. Uh, tunakundi lingine ambalo huenda Marekani na kule Canada. We have a group that goes to the Asian countries. Lakini pia tunambalo huenda katika bara la Asia. 
But there's somebody who is in charge of sending the men to all these nations. Yupo ambaye yeye ndo anahusika kuwatuma watu hawa katika mataifa haya yote. For me, kwangu mimi is a privilege. Ni nafasi ni heshima kubwa that the man who sends us out. Kwamba yeye ambaye huwa anatutuma has come to be with us in this meeting. Amekuja kuwa pamoja nasi katika kikao hiki. So we have with us yupo pamoja nasi um one he is a barrister is a lawyer is a barrister ah yeye ni uh, mwanasheria um he is a businessman lakini pia ni mfanyabiashara he is a politician <laughs> ni mwanasiasa pia he has been involved with the Nigerian Bar Association uh, amehusika na masuala ya kisheria ya Nigeria where he used to be an officer too ambapo pia alikuwa afisa pale but in the full gospel uh, katika shirika hili la full gospel he is a national vice president yeye ni makamu wa rais wa kitaifa in charge of international operations ambaye anahusika na masuala ya nchi za nje so to this evening ajioni ya leo Anytime you see us around Tanzania. Au mnapotuona huku Tanzania. I want to introduce to us Barista Boss Mustafa who sends us to come to this. Ningependa nimtambulishe kwenu yeye ambaye huwa anatutuma kuja hapa. I believe that he will have a slot to speak to us maybe at the grand banquet. Anaamini atapata muda wa kusema nasi labda katika ile zifaku. Of course he is married to a female wife. Uh, ameo mwanamke ambaye ndio mke wake and he has beautiful children na ana watoto wazuri so he is he is been very active in the fellowship amekuwa akijishughulisha sana na ushirika huu is in charge of the elite which we come to na yeye anafika kwa yote ambayo tunayoyaji if he did not um, allow us to come we won't have come on this mission. asinge turuhusu kuja basi tusinge kuja hapa so on our behalf we want to say welcome sir. kwa hivyo kwa niaba yetu tunasema karibu sana okay i'll leave it here till when for him to speak okay. uh, basi niachie hapo okay. angependa kutusalimu Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Well because I'm in the leadership here. Oh, katika uongozi hapa. Let me welcome you formally. Karibu. Niwakaribishe rasmi. Welcome. And to tell you salam. I have not forgotten my Swahili. Ha uh, na niwaambie pia salam sijasahau Kiswahili changu. I want to thank God. Nataka nimshukuru Mungu. I want to thank God for the life of our leader. Nataka nimshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya maisha ya kiongozi wetu. Engineer John Jao. Engineer John Jao. I came on this trip specifically because I wanted to meet him. Nimekuja safari hii kimahususi sana kwa sababu nilitaka nionane naye. Because I understand he is not been feeling very very strong. Kwa sababu naelewa kwamba amekuwa imara sana. Engineer Jao took the fellowship to Nigeria several decades ago. Ah, uh, Engineer Jao alipeleka ushirika huu kule Nigeria miongo kadhaa iliyopita. We caught the vision tukapokea yale maono because of consistency na kwa sababu ya uthabiti wake kwa sababu ya kujitoa kwake katika maono haya naweza niwaambie kwamba tumeendeleza maono haya I had talk about the vision of establishing 2000 chapters in a few years nimemsikia akisema yale maono ya kufungua chapter 2000 kwa miaka michache ijayo I don't dispute that because I know engineer Jao is a man of vision. Wala siwezi pingana na hilo kwa sababu nafahamu engineer Jao ni mtu mwenye maono. 
if the Lord tarries. Bwana akichelewa. And engineer Jao still has strength. Na engineer Njao akabaki kuwa na nguvu. He will pursue that dream till the last breath in his life. Atafuata maono hayo hadi pumzi yake ya mwisho. So I enjoin each and every one of you. Na mfurahia kila mmoja wenu to continue to pray for him. Endelea kumuombea. That the Lord will strengthen his inner man. Si kwamba Mungu aendelee kuimarisha utu wake wa ndani. And give him clarity in his vision. Na ampe maono ambayo yako wazi so that he will fulfill this dream that he has carried. Aweze kutimiza maono haya aliyoyabeba. He mentioned it to me when I came to the Arusha convention in 2019. Mwa mwaka 2019 kule Arusha alinitajia that that is the burden that the Lord has impressed upon his heart. Kwamba huo ndio mzigo ambao Bwana amewekeza moyoni mwake. And I've had him repeat it again today. Na nimemsikia akirudia hilo tena leo. I'm very very sure he is prophetic in his utterance. Na ninaamini kabisa kwamba ana matamshi ya kinabii katika usemi wake. But the people to make that vision come to pass. Lakini watu watakao sababisha maono hayo yatimie. Are you? Ni ninyi. You are the one who make that Ninyi ndio mtasababisha maono hayo yatimie. When engineer Jao took the fellowship to Nigeria a couple of decades ago. Ah uh, engineer Njao alipopeleka hii fellowship kule Nigeria miongo michache iliyopita. He would not have imagined that we would grow in strength and membership as we are today. Hakufikiri labda tungekuwa na uimara na wingi kama tulivyo leo. Today in Nigeria we have over 3000 chapters. Leo kule Nigeria tuna zaidi ya chapter 3000 ambazo zinakutanika kila wiki across the length and breadth of our country. Kwa mapana na marefu ya nchi yetu. With a membership population of over 100,000. Na kuna washiriki zaidi ya laki moja. This year we we're holding six regional conventions. Ha, mwaka huu tumekuwa na makongamano ya mkoa sita. We've, we've done three in the northern part of the country. Tumefanya matatu maeneo ya kaskazini and as we return na tu, we'll be going into another three in the southern part of the country. Na tutakaporudi tutakao tukifanya mengine matatu kule kusini. And at each of this convention. Na niwaambie katika kila moja wapo ya makongamano haya. In attendance thousands of people. Yanahudhuriwa na maelfu ya watu. So I want to encourage you. Tunataka niwatie moyo. For those of you that have come to Moshi. Ninyi ambao mmekuja Moshi. That next year. Mwakani if the Lord tarries. Bwana akikawia. You will multiply your membership. Mzidishe idadi zenu. You will also grow your chapters and multiply them. Ah chapters zenu nazo zikue, mzizidishe. Because the ministry of the full gospel is organic. If you do not multiply it, it will die. Ah kwa full gospel ni kitu kitu kilicho hai usipokizidisha basi kitakufa like uh, architect chuma kama alivyosema i am in charge of sanifu majengo chuma i am in charge of international outreaches in my country mimi ninasimamia swala la kufikia mataifa kule nchini kwetu and, and that that enables me to travel the law, the world na niwezesha kufiri kule i was in hong kong in the month of mwezi wa tisa to attend the full gospel global forum kuhudhuria taifa la gospel i did not return home i headed to trinidad and tobago in the caribbean wala sikurudi nyumbani kutoka hapo nilienda trinidad na tobago to attend the, the caribbean regional convention kuhudhuria lile kongamano la zile nchi za kikaribu na leo niko hapa leo moshi, hapa moshi tanzania to attend the Tanzania National Convention kuhudhuria kongamano la kitaifa la Tanzania Another group is in the US attending the Gatekeepers Convention in the US Ka kundi lingine liko Marekani wanahudhuria kongamano kule Marekani I have dispatched a team that is going to Guinea Bissau Na kuna kundi lingine tumelituma kule nchi ya Guinea Bissau So as the Lord enables us Kama Bwana anavyotuwezesha in our businesses and in our preoccupations Katika biashara zetu na shughuli zetu commit our resources and our time to the work of the ministry of the full gospel. Tunakabidhi rasmali zetu na muda wetu kwa huduma hii ya full gospel. The vision of 2000 chapters. Maono hayo chapters 1200. We will begin to count from to kuhesabu kuanzia leo. 
kwa sababu hakika itatendeka you have invested so much in our lives mmewekeza mengi sana katika maisha yetu in nigeria kule nigeria and whatever we need to do to pay back na chochote tutakachohitajika kufanya ili kulipa in investing in the fellowship here huo hapa nigeria will stand with tanzania nigeria tutasimama pamoja na tanzania mpaka maono hayo yatimie nataka niwashukuru don't look at the empty chairs usiangalie viti ambavyo havijakaliwa you know if it is there in your heart you will fill these chairs tomorrow ukitamani kwamba viti hivi vijazwe kesho and it's simple ni rahisi just invite one person mwalike mtu mmoja tu and ensure that they come with you tomorrow hakikisha ata mmoja na wewe kwa bwana kwa vipindi vyote vitakavyofundishwa na hata ile ratiba ya jioni ili kwa pamoja tuinue sauti zetu kwa Bwana ili ufalme wake na uje na mamlaka yake isimamishwe so thank you and god bless you asanteni na Mungu awabariki Bwana asifiwe amen uh, thank you very much uh, Uh, architect Choma and Asante barista sana. barista Mustafa. Na Mustafa thank you thank you very much this has been very inspiration na ashkuru sana hii imekuwa ya kutia moyo sana i think everybody is touched in the kile kila mmoja ameguswa moyoni mwake ndani kama yuko mtu ambaye hili jambo lijamwingia I don't think there is one who have not understood. Basi sisi tusimame katika kulitekeleza. Let's take our position in fulfilling it. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Uh, we move on. Tunaendelea. Now we would want to have some 10 minutes from Mr. Eric Ewo. Ah uh, tuna kama dakika kumi kutoka kwa Eric Ewo who is going to briefly talk about the full for Businessmen Fellowship International Vision. Kwa kifupi ataelezea maono ya Full Gospel Men Fellowship. Santa. Good evening. Habari za jioni. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Habari za jioni mabibi na mabwana. I'm happy I'm in Tanzania today. Ha ninafurahi kuwepo leo. Join your presence. Ha kufurahia kuwepo pamoja nanyi, kufurahia ushirika nanyi. Again my name is Eric Ewo. Ah jina langu ni Eric Ewo. I'm a member of Full Gospel Business Fellowship International. Mimi ni mshirika wa Full Gospel Business International. Ni rais wa chapter. I'm in Nigeria. Na kule Nigeria ni mzao wa Nigeria this evening. Ah somo langu jioni ya leo is quite simple. Ni rahisi sana. So some of us here tonight. Baadhi yetu jioni ya leo you may have been wondering. Mnaweza kuwa mnajiuliza. Who are these people? Hawa watu ni kina nani? Nataka niwakuambie sisi ni nani? We are full gospel. Sisi ni businessmen. Ni ushirika wa full gospel international kwa kimataifa. We believe tunaamini in the totality of the gospel. Katika ukamilifu wa injili. We believe in the word of God. Tunaaliamini neno la Mungu. We believe in the healing power of God. Tunaamini katika nguvu ya Mungu iponyaye. We believe in the work and the person of the Holy Spirit. Tunaamini katika uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. We are not a church. Sisi sio kanisa. This is a fellowship of laymen. Ni ushirika tu wa watu wa kawaida. Hao wa
Amen. Each one. Demos. Demos. Shekere. He has gone to be with the Lord. We are a vast, a vast movement of laymen, like I said, that are not trained of theology comprising millions of men that God is using in this end time to bring about the last great harvest of souls through the earth God's Holy Spirit before the return of Master as you can see, they are also our members. And they play very key and important roles in our fellowships. There are several of thousands of chapters of the Full Gospel the Men of International in over 160 nations of the world. Which Tanzania is one. It's one. So we are everywhere in the world. The places like there, restaurants, eateries. We meet in these places because it's a neutral ground. It provides opportunity for everyone to attend a fellowship meeting. Given the fact that we are not a church. And we can never, never be a church. The full gospel of the Main Philippine International is a good place to be and experience new friends from every race, colors, culture, and almost every language. Who are members? Our members are kings such as traditional rulers, president of nations. President of nations, president of nations. Prime ministers, members of the parliament, military officers, judges, captains of industries, executives, Businessmen, CEO, factory workers, sales and office workers, professionals, educators, artisans, and those young people that are just starting these are members. We have six fold missions. Tuna mission is sita. Full gospel is made Philippine International. Ah, katika full gospel. One of our mission. Moja wapo ya umisheni wewe. Is to come men. Ni kuwaita watu. For Jesus. Waje kwa Yesu. In all nations of the world. Katika mataifa yote ya ulimwengu. Just as we are doing here this evening. Kama ambavyo tuna vipani. Two. Ya pili. Is to come men back to God. Three is to help believers to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And to ritually. Four is to train and to equip believers for the Great Commission. Five to provide fellowship amongst Christians. And six to bring about greater unity amongst the people of God in the body of Christ. We pride ourselves as the happiest people on it. I want to assure you you are in the right place in the right gathering in the gathering of the happiest people on it. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the meeting of the happiest people on earth. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
Thank you. Thank you Asante very much. Sana. Thank you very much, Eric. Asante sana. Uh, let say something about the happiest people on earth. Uh, ni sema kwa habari ya watu wenye furaha sana duniani. Is, I. Mmoja wao ni mimi. Mimi ndiye simama hapo. I who is standing here. Sio wakati wa kutoa ushuhuda. It's not time to give Again, a ever since I've been a member. Lakini tangu nimekuwa sehemu ya honestly speaking. <laughs> I'm very happy. Mimi ni mtu mwenye furaha. One of the happiest people on earth. Mmoja wapo wa watu wenye furaha zaidi duniani. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Now it is time. Ah sasa wakati umefika time to bring up the main speaker. Ah wakati wa kumleta mnenaji mkuu and before he comes in na kabla hajaja I want to introduce him. Napenda ni mtambulishe kweli. Because you can kwa sababu utakumbuka earlier on pale mwanzoni I said nilisema I reserve his introduction nitaacha utambulisho wake that I will do it just before mara tu kabla he gets into the podium to speak yeye kusimama na kuzungumza nasi asante his name is reverend gerard ole nguyaine ah jina lake ni mchungaji ole nguyaine yeah, kama wewe hujakaa kaskazini ili neno nguyaine unabidi ulitamke taratibu ili ulipatie If you're not from the north his name I will be challenging for you to pronounce. He's a lead pastor here kiongozi at ICC in Dodoma. Wa kanisa la ICC kule Dodoma. He is also a director of ministries of mission ya TAG Taifa. Ah yeye ni mkurugenzi wa umisheni kitaifa kanisa la Tanzania Assemblies of God. Asante sana ana doctor of ministry kutoka Ashford seminary manakani shahada ya uzamili uh, kutoka uh, alipo Ashford Ashford Theolog- Ashford Theological Seminary uh, katika seminary ya Ashford lakini pia ana master of divinity yes uh, pia ana stashahada ya uzamili katika masuala ya divinity na nini teolojia El- elimu ya uungu ana masters ya elimu ya uungu Yes. Jini <laughs> rudi hapo mnisikie jamani. Ndi kwenye mambo ya hebu tuambie Kiswahili tuelewe. Dr. of Minister, ngoja kutuambia hapa mbele mko. Uzamivu katika huduma. Halafu ana Master of Divinity, Master katika uzamili katika elimu ya uungu. Lakini ana bachelor of computer science, ana stashahada ya sayansi ya kompyuta, mambo ya software engineering, ha, katika software engineering kutoka Franklin University Marekani tena. Ah chuo kikuu cha Franklin kutoka Marekani. Na ana diploma, ana stashahada ya mechanical engineering, ya mechanical engineering kutoka DIT wale mlosoma Cuba kama mimi utakumbuka DIT ni Datec. Nakumbuka. Sasa tunazungumza a very highly trained professional. Ah uh, huyu ni mtu ambaye ana mafunzo makubwa who is uh, heavily tra- uh, trained to serve God ambaye amefundishwa ili kumtumikia Mungu. And he is doing that na anafanya hivyo kwa sababu ni lead pastor because he is the lead pastor ICC Dodoma. Uh, ICC Dodoma. Na vile vile director Baroso of missions, uh, director of missions wa kitaifa, uh, national director of missions wa TAG, uh, Tanzania Assemblies of God. Asante. Dr. Nguya Nguyaine, Dr. Nguyaine, it's my pleasure now to welcome you. Ah uh, ni heshima yangu nikukaribisha. So that you can speak to us ili uweze kusema nasi those things that god has put yale mambo ambayo mungu ameyaweka heart moyoni mwako karibu sana you most welcome bwana yesu asifiwe na wasalimu
Niongeze mambo mawili katika utangulizi wangu. Besides being a pastor, I am also a farmer. Ah, uh, kando na kwamba mimi ni mchungaji, mimi ni mkulima pia. And I am not a bachelor. Na mimi sio bachelor. I am married 30 years now to my beautiful wife uh, Aisha. Kwa miaka 30 nimekuwa nimeoana na mke wangu Aisha. Who happens to come from this region? She is pia ni mzao wa mkoa huu. She is from Nkuu Machame. Anatoka Nkuu Machame. And if you want to know that the grace of God still works, na ukitaka kujua neema ya Mungu bado inafanya kazi, take a Masai and a chaka from Machame, put them together and 30 years later, Masai na mama wa Kimachame na miaka 30 baadaye, they are still happily married bado together. Bado wana furaha katika ndoa yao. That is grace. Hiyo ni neema. Amen. Amen. Now, I have a request to ask. Nina ombi uh, a, a great favor. Na if we could arrange to have interpreters sit to learn Swahili speakers so I can flow in Swahili without the interpretation, I don't want you to slow down because I have only 40 minutes and I usually preach at least an hour and 20 minutes. Aha, anaomba kama kuna watu tunaweza saidiana tukae karibu na wageni tuwatafsirie itasaidia sana. Is that okay, Master of Ceremony? Okay, asante ni sana. Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe, dhima ya kongamano letu hili ni kushinda hadi kileleni. Naomba ni kulete andiko kutoka waraka wa Paulo kwa warumi. Sura ile anane. Nita soma mistari kadhaa kwa kuruka ruka, nianzia na mstari wa kwanza na wa pili. Maandiko yanasema sasa basi hakuna hukumu ya adhabu juu yao walio katika Kristo Yesu naomba take note of that phrase in Christ katika Kristo Yesu kwa sababu sheria ya roho wa uzima ule ulio katika Kristo Yesu imeniacha huru mbali na sheria ya dhambi na mauti and let's jump to verse 31 twende Starule wa 31. Basi tuseme nini juu ya hayo. Mungu akiwa upande wetu ni nani aliye juu yetu? Yeye asiye muachilia mwana wake mwenyewe bali alimtoa kwa ajili yetu sisi sote. Atakosaje kutukirimia na mambo yote pamoja naye? Ni nani atakaye washtaki wateule wa Mungu? Mungu ndiye mwenye kuhesabia haki. Ni nani atakaye wahukumia adhabu? Kristo Yesu ndiye aliyekufa naam na zaidi ya hayo amefufuka katika wafu naye yuko mkono wa kume wa Mungu tena ndiye anayetuombea. Ni nani atakaye tutenga na upendo wa Kristo? Je, ni dhiki au shida au adha au njaa au uchi au hatari au upanga? Kama ilivyoandikwa ya kwamba kwa ajili yako tunauawa mchana kutwa tumehesabiwa kuwa kama kondoo wa kuchinjwa lakini katika mambo hayo yote na hapo ndipo tunasimamia tunashinda na zaidi ya kushinda kwa yeye aliyetupenda kwa maana nimekwisha kujua hakika ya kwamba wala mauti wala uzima wala malaika wala mwenye mamlaka wala yaliyopo wala yatakayokuwapo wala wenye uwezo wala yaliyo juu wala yaliyo chini wala kiumbe kingine chote hakitaweza kututenga na upendo wa Mungu ulio katika Kristo Yesu Bwana wetu Nani naomba na unipe kusema na fahamu na mioyo ya watu wako katika jina takatifu la Yesu Kristo. Amen. Nipende kuwashukuru viongozi wa Full Gospel Men's Fellowship kwa heshima walionipa ya kunialika kama mnenaji mkuu katika kongamano hili. Ninataka nitulie hapo hapo kwenye theme ya kongamano hili. Na nimeipa message yangu kichwa cha habari More than conquerors. Zaidi ya washindi. Niko hapa kukuambia ya kwamba sisi ni zaidi ya washindi. Amina. 
Lakini ili tuwe zaidi ya washindi kuna mahali lazima tuanzie. Na hapo ndipo tuliposoma mstari wa kwanza. Katika Kristo Yesu. Bwana asifiwe. Katika Kristo Yesu tunashinda na zaidi ya kushinda. Paulo anataka huu wa, wa kwa Warumi sura hii ya nani? Na kuna mambo matatu nataka nilete kwenye sura hii ya nane inaanza na kutuambia kwamba hakuna tena adhabu ya hukumu juu yao walio katika There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Alafu inamalizia na kutuambia kwamba there is absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Hakuna kitu chochote kinachoweza kututenga sisi na upendo wa Mungu. Na ujue sasa huo upendo wa Mungu ndio unaotufanya sisi kuwa washindi na zaidi ya washindi. Na hapo katikati kati ya hakuna hukumu kwa walio ndani ya Yesu na hakuna kitu kitakachowatenganisha na Mungu hao walio ndani ya Yesu hapo katikati tunaambiwa hakuna kushindwa kwa hao walio there is no, no condemnation at the end no separation in between no defeat kwa kina nani kwa wale walio ndani ya Yesu Kristo Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hiyo tunaonda Paulo baada ya kushughulika na swala la kushinda utumwa wa dhambi katika sura ya sita. alafu anakuja sura ya saba. anashughulika na kongwa la sheria. Anakuja sasa sura ya nane. anatuonyesha kwamba there is a new way of life. Kuna njia mpya ya maisha kwa watu ambao watakuwa ndani ya Kristo. Na njia hii ya maisha imeshikiliwa na mihimili mikubwa miwili. Muhimili wa kwanza unaitwa upendo wa Mungu. Muhimili wa pili ni roho mtakatifu wa Mungu ambaye ndiye atupae sasa nguvu hii ya ushindi. Mkristo hawezi kushinda masaibu yote ya maisha bila nguvu ya Roho Mtakatifu. Ndio maana tunaona pale mstari ule wa moja anatuambia lakini ikiwa roho yake yeye aliyemfufua Yesu katika wafu anakaa ndani yenu yeye aliyemfufua Kristo Yesu katika wafu atahuisha na miili yenu iliyo katika hali ya kufa kwa roho wake anayekaa ndani yenu kumbuka pale sura ya saba, mwandishi paulo anatueleza mahangaiko yake na maisha haya na mwili anatuambia lile jema analotaka kufanya hawezi kulifanya lile baya ambalo hataki kulifanya anajikuta ndilo anafanya lakini haishi hapo anakuja sasa sura ya nane anatuambia iko habari njema maana iko njia mpya ya ushindi kupitia roho wa Mungu maana sasa wale walio ndani ya Kristo Yesu kwao hakuna adhabu ya hukumu maana roho wa uzima anawaweka huru kutokana na roho ya dhambi na mauti. Kwa hiyo tuna ushindi. Wapi jamani? Ndani ya Kristo. Katika Kristo. Yeye ambaye Mwandishi wa waraka wa pili wa Korintho sura ile ya tano mstari wa saba anatuambia hata imekuwa mtu akiwa ndani yake Kristo Yesu amekuwa kiumbe yake ya kale yamepita zama yamekuwa mapya na mimi niko hapa kama wa injili kukutangazia leo you can brand new life in Christ Jesus 
mambo yako ya zamani yakasahaulika yakatengwa mbali na wewe ukafungua ukurasa mpya wa maisha kwa sababu yuko Kristo mtengeneza maisha ya watu wake haleluya Mwandishi wa Wakolosai sura ya tatu, mstari wa tatu, anatuambia kwamba ndani yake Kristo Yesu tunakuwa na uhai wetu ambao umefichwa pamoja na yeye katika Mungu. Hapo inazungumza habari ya ulinzi ndani ya Mungu na ulinzi. Maisha yako yanafichwa pamoja na Kristo katika Mungu. Ninawashirika wanakujaga. Ananiambia mchungaji niombe Leo nimeingia ofisini nikakuta hirizi mlangoni mwa ofisi yangu. Alafu wanawauliza, "Mama, umeokoka?" Ndiyo. Kanda sasa kwa nini unakuja kwangu? Hiyo hirizi ulitakiwa unyanyue, upite kwenye kila ofisi waambie, "Yeye anaeleta hirizi kwenye ofisi yangu, yale mabaya aliyonikusudia yanipate mimi na yageuza yawe mara kumi kwake." Alafu mbele ya macho yao, unachukua ile hirizi, unaiweka chini, unaisaga tiki tiki. Kwa nini maisha yako yamefichwa pamoja na Kristo katika Mungu ili mchawi akupate wewe ampenye kwanza Kristo ampenye Mungu ndio akukute wewe hiyo kitu haiwezekani Mwandishi wa kitabu cha Matendo wa Mitume sura ya 17 mstari wa 28 anatuambia ndani yake Kristo Yesu tunaishi tunaenenda na kuwa na uhai wetu jina la Bwana libarikiwe Alaba tumsikilize mwandishi wa kitabu cha Wagalatia sura ya pili mstari wa 20 sikiliza anavyosema anasema nimesulubiwa pamoja na Kristo lakini ni hai wala si mimi tena bali Kristo you hai ndani yangu na uhai nilionao sasa katika mwili ninao katika imani ya mwana wa Mungu ambaye alinipenda akajitoa nafsi yake kwa ajili yangu jina la Bwana libarikiwe ninataka uone kwamba sisi ni washindi tunaoshinda zaidi ya kushinda kwa sababu tuko ndani ya Yesu Kristo na ametupa roho wake mtakatifu anayetusaidia. Kwa hiyo ukiwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo au hukumiwi. Hakuna hukumu juu yako. Ukiwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo umehesabiwa haki. And you are justified not on account of your performance but on account of the grace of God sio utendaji wako unaokupa ku earn ile kuhesabiwa haki na Mungu ni neema ya Mungu ni upendo wa Mungu katika Kristo Yesu ndio unaokupa wewe kuhesabiwa haki ukiwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo hauwezi kutenganishwa na upendo wa Mungu ambao unaupokea katika Kristo Yesu na ukiwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo wewe ni zaidi ya mshindi yani sio mshindi tu ni zaidi ya nini jamani? Ni zaidi ya mshindi. Sasa Paulo anaelezea dhana hii ya upendo wa Mungu ambao ndio msingi tunasimama juu yake kama watu wanaoshinda na zaidi ya kushinda. Na anajenga hoja kama tano hivi ambazo napenda nikupitishe haraka haraka muda wangu sio mwingi sana. Hoja ya kwanza Tunaona mstari wa 31. Paulo anasema Mungu yuko upande wetu. Mimi nimezaliwa kwenye familia kubwa sana ya kipagani na mshukuru Mungu kwa neema ya wokovu ambayo imenipa kuwa mshindi. Baba alioa wake watano, kapata watoto 48. Profession nilioanza nayo mimi ni ya kuchunga ngombe kwa neema ya Bwana nikiwa na umri wa miaka tisa ndio nika nika nikaibwa literally kuna mtu aliniba akaenda akaniandikisha shule that's how i ended up going to school na nikiwa na umri wa miaka tisa nikakutana na neema ya Mungu Yesu Kristo akanio akilikuwa na umri wa miaka kumi Yesu akaniokoa na nimebaki kwenye neema hiyo mpaka leo sasa kitu ninachotaka nikwambie ni hii dhana ya Mungu kwa upande wetu huyu mzee kwa sababu alikuwa na wake watano ni kama alikuwa anafiatua 
almost at least kuna watoto wan, wasiopungua wanne wako karibu umri mmoja. Kwa hiyo nilikuwa na kaka zangu wakubwa. Tunaenda nao kuchunga ngombe huko porini. Moja ya vitu tulikuwa tunakutana navyo ni vijana wa kundi lingine kukuambia ondoa ngombe zako hapa kwenye malisho haya nataka ngombe wangu ndio wakae hapa sasa kwa sababu nilikuwa mtoto mdogo wale wakubwa wananionea kitu ambacho hawakujua nilikuwa na kaka zangu wakubwa wamekaa kwenye kivuli cha mti fulani sio mbali sana na kundi la ngombe kwa hiyo wale wananikuta kwenye kundi maana nimetumwa na kaka zangu nenda karudisha ngombe wale wanajitokeza nani amekuambia leta ngombe hapa sasa mimi kwa sababu najua nina watu nyuma yangu na ni mdogo mdogo baba mchungaji anambia wewe nini utanifanya nini wewe wewe soge hapa nitakuvuruga mimi alafu anapokuja mimi nazidi kupiga step za kuelekea kule waliko kaka zangu lakini huku nawatambia uniwezi wewe kama wewe njamba alafu nikikaribia mara kaka zangu anaibuka mimi jamaa inakimbia kwa sababu nilikuwa na kaka zangu walio upande wangu Mungu akiwa upande wetu ni nani atakaye nyume nasi Hivi unaujua ukuu wa Mungu wewe Unaujua ukuu wa Mungu Hamna Kwa hiyo uwe na Mungu upande wako Kula tukua na Mungu tayari wewe ni mshindi Bwana Yesu asifiwe Shetani hawezi kusimama kinyume nawe na maana tunajua Yesu alimshinda pale msalabani. Ulimwengu hawezi kuwa kinyume nawe maana tunajua Yesu aliushinda ulimwengu. Mwili hawezi kukuharibu sababu tunajua Yesu aliishi katika mwili na akashinda tamaa zote za mwili na ndani yake tunaambiwa sisi ni zaidi ya washindi. Haleluya. Kwa hiyo tuwe watu wa jasiri kama watu wa Mungu kama muamini katika Kristo Yesu ikabili kila siku mpya ya maisha yako ukijua ya kwamba Mungu yuko upande wako na hakuna kuogopa namkumbuka daktari mmoja pale kanisani kwangu kipindi kile cha corona ile wave ya pili ambayo ilikuwa mbaya sana mimi nilipoteza washirika watano mimi mwenyewe niliugua nililala kitandani sijiwezi wiki tatu. Lakini Mungu kwa neema yake akaniponya. Sasa mtakumbuka kipindi kile hospitals were overwhelmed. Mpaka kukajengeka dhana fulani kwamba ukienda hospitalini unaenda kufa, afadhali ujitibie wapi? Mbani. Sasa nikagundua nina washirika wengi wagonjwa mmoja siku moja mke wangu anampigia kumcheki anaitwa Clement mke wangu alivyomsikia akiongea kwa simu kwa taabu kifua kilicho kilivobana yule mama akaniambia nyanyuka wasi mchungaji nenda kwa Clement ujua una na corona nina daktari mmoja mwanajeshi mstaafu pale kanisani kwangu nikashikana naye nikamwambia sasa sisi tunakuwa madaktari wa washirika wetu nakumbuka maneno ya yule daktari akaniambia mchungaji usiogope Mungu hawezi kukuruhusu kufa wakati unawahudumia watu wake kuokoa maisha yao Wewe hakikisha tumevaa mask tuna sanitizer tunaenda siku moja kwa huyu bwana tulimkuta yani tungechelewa siku moja zaidi tungekuwa hatunae leo Tukawa tunatembea nyumba kwa nyumba kutoa dawa daktari kwa washirika na kuwaombea kama mchungaji na Bwana akatulinda maana Bwana akiwa upande wetu hata korona haituwezi Kwa hiyo Paulo anasema sababu moja wapo kwa nini tunakuwa zaidi ya washindi ni kwa sababu nani yuko upande wetu jamani Mungu yuko upande wetu hoja ya Paulo ya pili anasema Kristo alikufa kwa ajili yetu mstari wa 32 Na anasema ikiwa wakati tulipokuwa wenye dhambi Mungu Kristo Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yetu Si zaidi sana sasa tukiwa ndani yake atatukirimia mambo yote 
Paulo ana make argument yake kwa kutumia kanuni tunasemaga from the greatest to the lesser. Yaani zawadi ya juu na ya thamani mno Mungu amewahi kutupa wanadamu ni kumtoa mwana mwanawe pekee Kristo Yesu kufa msalabani kwa ajili yetu tupate kusamehewa dhambi na kupatanishwa na Mungu hakuna kitu kikuu kitashinda hiyo sasa Paulo anajenga hoja anasema ukishakuwa ndani ya huyu Mungu ambaye ametoa heaven's best for you ni kitu gani kingine kwenye maisha haya ambayo atashindwa kukukirimia Jibu ni hakuna. Kwa hiyo sisi ni washindi zaidi ya kushinda Bwana Yesu asiviwe. Kwa sababu Mungu huyu ambaye anawajali ndege waangani, anajali maua ya kondeni, si zaidi wewe ambaye umeumbwa kwa sura na mfano wake. Mwanadamu na kazi moja tu, ili ufurahie neema hii ya ushindi ambayo itakupa nguvu ya kupanda mpaka kwenye kilele cha mlima wowote ulio kwenye maisha yako uwe ndani ya Yesu. Bwana asifiwe. That's it. Sai haka leo kasinga fika mahali ana sifa zote hizo mlizo tajiwa kama asinge kuwa ndani ya Yesu. Maana watoto mia na hamsini niliomaliza nao darasa la saba mwaka huo kutoka kijijini kwangu hakuna aliyefika mahali nilipofika si kwa sababu nina akili zaidi kuwashinda wao lakini kuna kitu cha ziada nilipokea siku ile nilipompokea Yesu nimepokea kitu kinachoitwa neema ninatembea ndani ya hiyo neema ninapaa ndani ya hiyo neema ninafanikiwa ndani ya hiyo neema ninalindwa ndani ya hiyo neema ninabarikiwa ndani ya hiyo neema ndani ya Yesu Kristo Bwana asifiwe ndani ya Yesu Kristo Yeye ambaye Biblia inasema Paulo anaandika anasema alikufa kwa ajili yetu sio kwamba alikufa tu akafufuka akapaa mbinguni na sasa ameketi mkono wa kuume Mungu Baba anatuombea unamwombezi mbinguni Huhitaji kukwenda kwa manabii na mitume upewe chumvi sijui ya, ya upako sijui maji ya upako mafuta ya upako you need none of those stay in Christ Jesus yuko mbinguni anakuombea kwa baba wewe just cultivate a right relationship with him na mambo mengine yatakaa sawa bwana asifiwe kwa sababu jue anakupenda kwa upendo mkuu na haijalishi kuna dhambi ya namna gani bila inasema kama tukiungama dhambi zetu yeye ni mwaminifu na wahaki hata tusamehe dhambi zetu na kututakasa na udhalimu wote baraka wa kwanza wa Yohana moja mstari ule wa tisa. na namna tunaweza tukamshinda yule mshtaki wetu ukikosea kidogo tu anaanza kwa attack mawazo yako nafsi yako amani yako ambaye anaitwa shetani iko njia rahisi sana ya kumshinda shetani Bwana Yesu asifiwe Siku moja Yesu alikuwa na wanafunzi wake akawaambia hivi Tazama mkuu wa ulimwengu huu yuaja akimaanisha shetani lakini akamalizia anasema hana kitu kwangu i owe him nothing he has nothing to demand from me sasa sisi kwa sababu ni wanadamu na tuna madhaifu mengi wakati mwingine tunajikuta tunafika mahali tunampa shetani sababu ya kuwa na madai juu ya maisha yetu lakini leo nataka nikuambie njia ya kumnyang'anya shetani hayo madai alionayo juu ya maisha yako ni rahisi sana hebu muulize jirani yako unataka kujua inaitwa toba Bwana asifiwe inaitwa nini jamani toba ukitubu umemnyang'anya shetani nguvu 
Maana tunaye Mungu ambaye tukitubu anatuambia hata japo dhambi zetu zingalikuwa nyekundu kama damu anatuosha anatusafisha tunakuwa weupe kama theluji. Shetani anakuwa hana kitu cha kudai kwako unapotubu na kutengeneza mambo yako na Mungu wako. Jambo la tatu, hoja ya tatu Paulo anajenga kwenye kifungu hiki cha maandiko tulichosoma. Anasema kwamba Mungu ametuhesabia Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mungu amefanya nini jamani? Ulikuwa huna haki. Wewe ulikuwa unastahili kuhukumiwa. Lakini Mungu hakuhukumu. Mungu anashughulika na sisi akitumia vitu viwili. Kuna kitu kinaitwa neema ya Mungu na kuna kitu kinaitwa rehema za Mungu. Ngoja nikupe leo kuelewa tofauti kati ya vitu hivi viwili ambavyo vyote viwili vinafanya vina kazi katika maisha yako kwa wakati mmoja. Neema ya Mungu ni pale ambapo Mungu anakupatia vile ambavyo hukustahili. Wewe hukustahili kuhesabiwa haki, ulistahili kuhukumiwa, lakini Mungu kwa neema yake anakuhesabia haki ukitubu dhambi. Neema inafanya kazi. Rehema za Mungu ni pale ambapo Mungu anakuzuilia kupokea kupata kitu ambacho ndicho hasa ulichostahili. Kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu, mimi na wewe tulistahili hukumu, lakini rehema za Mungu zikasema hapana, asipewe hukumu, apewe neema. Sisi tulistahili kukatiliwa mbali na Mungu, lakini rehema ya Mungu inasema hapana. Hawa watu wasipewe kukatiliwa mbali na Mungu bali wavutwe karibu na Mungu. Neema na rehema za Mungu zinafanya kazi kwa pamoja. Yale mabaya uliostahili kupata, rehema za Mungu zinaku, zinaku shield, zinakukinga usipate hayo mabaya. Yale ambayo hukustahili kabisa, Mungu kwa neema yake anakupa bure hata japokuwa haujastahili. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu Yesu Kristo alilipa gharama msalabani kwa ajili yako wewe na mimi jamani hizo ni habari njema kwa nini usimchapie Yesu makofi mara moja jamani <laughs> tumehesabiwa haki lakini kama nilivyokusha kutangulia hoja ya nne Paulo anajenga Yesu anatuombea mbinguni kuna story moja niliwahi kusikia mahali It was very interesting. There was a rabbit that was being chased by a dog. Mbwa akawa anamfukuza huyu nani huyu sungura. Alafu kulikuwa na umati wa watu wanashangilia wana kumtia moyo sungura. Wanaambia sungura run run rabbit run faster run for your life kimbia kimbia the dog is closing in mbwa anakaribia lakini watazamaji wanamwambia tu sungura kimbia 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 mbwa anakaribia alafu kwa mshangao wa umati mzima ikafika mahali yule sungura akasimama akaacha kukimbia akatazama ule umati uliokuwa unamshangilia akimbie What everybody held their breath. What is happening? And the dog is closing in. Alafu Sungura akawaambia ule umati wa watu, for goodness sake, shoot the dog. Somebody did not get the joke. Jamani msinishangilie kukimbia. Mtu mmoja apate mtutu, piga mbwa mtutu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu kule mbinguni anatuombea kwa maana ya kwamba wakati mwingine sisi ni kama sungura tunakimbizwa na matatizo ya dunia hii ambayo hatuna nguvu ya kuyashinda lakini Yesu hakushangilii wewe ukimbie kwa mbio zaidi ana kuna epusha na vimbo vinakuepuka Yesu anakuombea mbele za baba haleluya tunaye muombezi Kristo Yesu ameketi mkono wa kume wa Mungu baba mengine
Mimi nilioka hapa leo ningekuwa nimeshakufa. Siku moja nilikuwa na kikao nilitakiwa kwa kuhudhuria makao makuu ya kanisa letu yalikuwa Dar es Salaam wakati huo pale ubungu. Kuna sema nilikuwa nimepewa ambao nilitakiwa kupresent kwenye mkutano ule. Kawa sijamaliza niondoke leo kwa hii mkutano kesho. Nikabaki Dodoma usiku kucha naandika majira ya saa ndio nikaanza safari naelekea Dar es Salaam. Kwa wale mnaofahamu njia ya Dodoma Dar es Salaam. Nimefika pale maeneo ya Morogoro eneo linaloitwa Kihonda. Saa hizo ni majira ya saa kumi na moja alfajiri. Kuna jamaa alikuwa anaendesha semi trailer. Akapiga zile full light. Nikawa sasa mtu unaendesha usiku mtu akikupigia zile full light unakuwa huoni vizuri. Kuna mstari wa njano huo unachorwa pembeni. Mimi nikawa natumia huo mstari kama maka maana nauona maana sioni mbele. Kumbe kitu sikujua huyu jamaa wa semi trailer ameacha lane yake kidogo anekula kwangu kidogo. Kitu ninashtukia amepiga gari langu akangoa tairi la upande huo aliopiga lote na akso yake akabeba nikabaki nina gari halina gurudumu pale mbele. Ndani ya Kristo sisi ni zaidi ya washindi. Saa hizo sikuwa na muda ule wa kuanza yale maombi ya e Mungu wa Elia mtishbi uliyegawanya majaba huna muda huo saa hizo. Maombi yangu nilitaja Aliponipiga nilianza kusikia gravitational force inalaza gari upande huu nilipasema Yesu nikalisikia gari linarudi lina air bag zime deploy zimenifunika uso nasikia sauti ile ndogo ya utulivu walio na roho wa Mungu kitu kingine nataka nikuambie ndani yako huwa kuna sauti nasema na wewe kukupa maelekezo kwa ajili ya usalama wako na mafanikio yako nikasikia ile sauti ya ndogo ya utulivu inaniambia don't apply the brakes muulize dereva yoyote rabsha yoyote ikitokea barabarani reaction ya kwanza ni wapi nimesikia tu ile sauti pat nikasikia sauti inaniambia don't apply the brakes nikabaki tu nimeshikilia usukani sasa wale mnaofahamu mambo ya engineering unapokuwa na magurudumu ya narol upande mmoja hakuna gurudumu naturally gari linaanza kwenda kule ambako hakuna gurudumu kwa hiyo gari lika cross barabara halina gurudumu moja Mungu akazuia magari mengine hakuna lilo moja iliyokuwa mbele nimebakiza kama nchi tatu nigonge hiyo nyumba nikasikia gari linageuka linatazama kule nilikotoka kumbuka sioni uso wote umefunikwa na airbag alafu likasimama pale jamani Mungu anatulinda mimi navaa miwani kama unavoniona waswahili wanasema Mungu fundi Mungu alijua angeruhusu nitandikwe uso nikiwa na haya miwani Miwani hii labda inge, inavunjika vunjika vile vinini vi, vipande vidogo vingeniingia machoni vingepofsha. Vi, Roho Mtakatifu literally the Holy Spirit alinivua miwani akakunja akaweka kwenye compartment ile iko pembeni mwa, mwa mlango rafiki yangu. Nimetoka sasa kwenye ile ajali nime, nimefungua mkanda na jicheke kama sijavunjika nikaona niko okay mikono niko okay lakini nikagundua sina miwani. Nikatoa Mulika pale nitafute miwani yangu iko wapi sikuona nikadhani labda ile force imerusha kule nyuma ya gari nikaenda kule nyuma na mulika nikiwa kule nyuma na mulika roho mtakatifu anambia nenda pale kwenye compartment pale kwenye kwenye visor pale kwenye mlango miwani yako iko pale baba mchungaji nimekuta miwani yangu hii imekunjwa namna hii iko ndani pale nani nikaichukua imekunjwa hivi Haina hata scratch yoyote. Baada muda polisi wanakuja. Nimetoka nje sasa nimesimama pale nimekunja mikono. Niko kwenye ibada ninamwabudu Mungu huyu ambaye anatulinda kwa 
kwa jinsi ya ajabu hata sisi tusipojua yeye halali hasinzi usiku na mchana mlinzi wa Israeli halali Polisi wananiuliza who was driving this car and i told them i was and this policeman tells me unajua tuko kazini hapa hatutaki hatutaki utani eh nani alikuwa kwenye ile gari sasa nilipoona anatumia mamlaka na mimi nikaamua kutumia mamlaka nilionayo. Nikamwambia, "Sir, I am a pastor. I serve God." Na Mungu huwa na watumishi wake wanaitwa malaika. Amewatuma kumlinda mtumishi wake ili asitoke kwenye ajali hii. Malaika wa Bwana wamenilinda. Ndio maana unaniona hivi nilivyo. Haleluya. wakaanza mchungaji baba mchungaji ulikuwa unaenda wapi nikawaeleza baadaye pale kwenye kituo cha polisi cha msanvu wamefanya processes zao zote hizo habari zimetapaka pale mjini Morogoro kuna mchungaji hapa Mungu amemuokoa kwa jinsi ya ajabu gari halifai lakini hana hata mkwaruzo wakati naenda kuchukua ile statement yao ya mwisho sasa mimi niondoke kuna mama mmoja yeye hajaja kwenye sin lakini aliambiwa na wenzake pale kituoni yule mama nilipofika pale akaniambia baba mchungaji wewe ndio ulikuwa kwenye gari ile nikaambia ndio akanishika mkono akanipeleka pembeni mama watu huyu afisa wa polisi analia machozi akaniambia baba huyo Mungu wako naomba usimwache naomba usimwache analia mama wa watu nikamwambia mama sina mpango wa kumwacha hivi ndio ninazidisha kutembea naye haleluya ngoja nimalize ngoja nimalize nina mengi ya kukuambia lakini ngoja yanipasa nimalize yanipasa nimalize kwa sababu ya muda jambo la tano na la mwisho ni sisi ni washindi na zaidi ya washindi mistari la 35 mpaka 39 kwa sababu Kristo anatupenda Kristo anatupenda Hakuna mtu mwenye upendo kama huu kwamba mtu autoe uhai wake kwa ajili ya rafiki zake Kristo Yesu alitoa uhai wake pale msalabani kwa ajili yako kwa ajili yangu kwa sababu anatupenda na kwa sababu ya upendo wa namna hii hakuna kitu kinaweza kututenga na upendo huu ndugu zangu mimi ni mhubiri but i am a realist mungu anaweza asikukinga tatizo na saibu ya maisha yako Utap- kitu mungu amekuahidi regardless of what happens to you hakuna kitu kitakacho kuondoa wewe kwa mungu Hakuna kitu kitakacho kutenga na upendo wa Mungu. Labda ufike tu mahali wewe mwenyewe uamue kama wanaposema watoto wa mitaani. Lakini ule upendo wa Mungu umehakikishwa. Paulo alisema baadhi ya matatizo hayo, trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger and the sword. Anasema hakuna yoyote kati ya haya yataweza kututenga sisi na upendo wa Kristo ndugu zangu wakati ule ambapo unapitia hali ngumu ya maisha ambayo wako haiwezi kuyapata maelezo Yesu bado anakupenda hata pale ambapo huna fedha anakupenda hata pale ambapo ni mgonjwa kuna maradhi ameupiga mwili wako nakupenda hata pale ambapo pengine ndoa yako inapitia misukosuko Yesu bado anakupenda hata pale ambapo inaonekana dunia yote imeinuka kinyume na wewe Yesu bado anakupenda 
Hata pale ambapo unajisikia wewe ni kama kondoo anayeongozwa kupelekwa machinjioni. Yesu bado anakupenda. Hata pale ambapo utateswa kwa sababu ya imani yako ndani yake yeye Yesu Kristo. Matatizo yatakuja. Maana tunaishi kwenye dunia hii iliyoanguka katika dhambi. Lakini hayo matatizo hayawezi kukuondoa kwa Mungu. Furaha yako inaweza ikatetereka. Lakini mafanikio yako ya kiroho hayawezi kuondolewa na hiyo hali inayokuibia furaha. Mwandishi wa Biblia anasema mpenzi kaya unataka ufanikiwe katika mambo yote na kuwa na afya yako kama vile roho yako inavyofanikiwa. The prosperity of your soul is the basis of every other prosperity you need in your life. Roho yako inafanikiwa kwenye mahusiano mazuri na Mungu muumba wako. Trouble cannot take away the love of God from you. Animalizia kusema sasa. Paulo anasema sasa baada ya kupitia mambo yote hayo. Anasema tuseme nini juu ya mambo haya? Ni kitu gani kitaweza kututenda na upendo wa Mungu? Alionao kwetu katika Kristo Yesu. Anasema hakuna. Naam. Sisi ni washindi tena zaidi ya kushinda. We are more than conquerors. Unajua kuna mshindi na zaidi ya mshindi. Ngoja nijaribu kukuonyesha tofauti. Mshindi anamshinda adui yake. Lakini yeye aliye zaidi ya mshindi anamweka adui yake chini ya miguu yake. Jiji kama unaona tofauti. Mshindi anaweza akabatilisha hila na mipango ya adui yake. Lakini yeye ambaye ni zaidi ya mshindi anamsababisha adui yake ageuka ageuke kutumikia makusudi yake yeye aliyeshinda. Yaani wao makusudi yako ilikuwa ni kuniharibu. Sasa na, nimekushinda na zaidi ya kukushinda yale makusudi yako ya kuniletea mimi hasara kwenye maisha yangu. Sasa ninayageuza yanakuwa faida kwangu. Warumi 8:28 na situajua ya kwamba katika mambo yote mema na mabaya mambo yote Mungu hufanya na wale wampendao katika kufanya mema. Nenda kaangalie kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya hamsini mstari wa ishirini tunakutana na Yusufu anaongea na ndugu zake. Lakini Mungu ameyakusudia mabaya hayo hayo kuwa mema ili kuoko Nataka ni kuambia leo ukiwa ndani ya Yesu usiogope mipango mipaya ya adui yako Mungu anaweza akachukua mipango hiyo hiyo kukupa mpenyo katika maisha yako kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu anayegeuza mabaya yaliyokusudiwa yawe mema yatenda mema kwa ajili yako haleluya wewe ni zaidi ya mshindi ndani yake Kristo Yesu Naomba tusimame. Let's stand on our feet please. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Jesus. Nataka niombe pamoja na wewe. Kuna mambo matatu na kuambia leo. Wewe waweza kuwa mshindi tena zaidi ya mshindi. Lakini hilo linawezekana tu ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Kristo Yesu ambaye ndani yake unapokea upendo wa Mungu. Ambao ukishapokea huo upendo wa Mungu, hakuna kitu chochote kitaweza kukutenga na huo upendo wa Mungu. Hautoshi. Ningekuwa 
uso nilio kwenye familia yangu ya kipagani nilipookoka kijana wa umri wa miaka kumi. kwenye familia ya baba mwenye wake watano watoto nane. alafu hiki kitoto cha umri wa miaka kumi ndio anakuja anawaambia Yesu anaokoa lakini hayo tuyaache nitawaeleza siku nyingine mtakaponiita nije niwahubirie kwa leo nataka nikuulize swali la muhimu hebu naomba kila mtu afunike macho yake katika kumtafakari Mungu mimi sijui una kilele gani unachotaka kukwea mpaka ushinde kilele ni mwake. Inawezekana ni magonjwa unayopambana nayo. Inawezekana ni changamoto za kazi yako. Inawezekana ni changamoto za biashara yako. Inawezekana ni changamoto za kiuchumi. Inawezekana kwenye profession yako there are challenges you are facing and you want to mount up with wings as an eagle all the way to the summit. I'm proposing to you tonight namna unaweza ukafanya hivyo ni kwa kuanzia kukaa ndani ya Yesu yeye ambaye kwake yote anawezekana I don't want to make the assumption kwamba kila mtu hapa ameokoka Na kama kuna mtu hajaokoka Kama Yesu anaweza akamtafuta huyu kijana wa Kimasai huko kwao porini kwenye upagani akamuokoa na leo amemuita kuwa ni mhubiri wa kimataifa hakuna analoshindwa analo kufanya kwako mpe tu Yesu moyo wako upate hasara yoyote kwa kukanda ni ya Yesu unapata kila faida kwa hiyo nitataka niombe kwa ajili ya mahitaji yenu ambayo mnaweza mkawa nayo lakini nataka nianze na hili la kumpatanisha mtu mmoja na Kristo ambaye yuko hapa pengine anajua hujawahi kufanya maamuzi binafsi ya kumfanya Yesu bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yako with every eye closed and every head bowed down in reverence and awe of God if you are here and you know that you are not born again you have never made a decision to invite Christ into your heart as your lord and savior nataka nikupe nafasi hiyo hayo ndio yatakuwa maamuzi ya maana kuliko yote uliyowahi kufanya kwenye maisha yako na kama upo ili nipate kujua uko hapa kwa nini usinyoshe mkono wako juu nipate kujua upo niombe na wewe kama uko hapa hujaokoka na unatamani leo umpe Yesu maisha yako ukae ndani yake uwe mshindi na zaidi ya mshindi naomba nione mkono wako kama upo Haijalishi una hadhi gani kwenye jamii. Maadamu ni mwanadamu aliyeumbwa kwa sura na mfano wa Mungu. You need Christ in your life. Kama upo. Blessed be God. If we are all born again, if we all have a functional relationship with Jesus. Ningependa kuomba sasa baraka za Mungu juu ya maisha yako. Baba yetu na Mungu wetu. Asante kwa ajili ya upendo wako huu mkuu ambao umefunuliwa kwetu katika Kristo Yesu. Upendo ambao tukishazama ndani yake. Hakuna mtu akuweza kutungatua ndani yake. Hakuna hali yoyote ya maisha iwezayo kutuondoa ndani yake. Hakuna forces za aina yoyote duniani mbinguni chini ya mbingu zitakazoweza kututenga na upendo wako. Asante kwa ajili ya Asante kwa sababu kupitia upendo huu umetukirimia mambo yote. Inawezekana yuko mwana wa Mungu alioko hapa leo. Ana mahitaji ya namna mbalimbali. Hayajatajwa wala kutamkwa. Lakini wewe ni Mungu ujuae mambo yote, ni Mungu onaye mambo yote. Ninainua mahitaji ya kila mmoja wao mbele za kiti chako cha rehema. Mahitaji yanayohusiana na changamoto za kiafya. Wewe Yesu ni tabibu mponyaji mkuu. Ninaomba ukaachilie nguvu ya uponyaji wa zikashuke juu yake aliyemdhaifu mwili wake. Kautosi wa kichwa nyao miguu apate kuwa mzima. Pokea uponyaji katika jina la Yesu. Nguvu zake aliye juu zishuke juu yako. Uwe mzima na uwe udhaifu uondoke. Kristo alikuja uwe na uzima tena uwe na otele. Pokea katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Baba walio na changamoto za kiuchumi, biashara zao zinatetereka, ofisi zao haziendi vizuri. 
Chilie neema ya mafanikio katika jina la Yesu Kristo release a special grace for breakthrough oh God Ahidi kubariki kazi za mikono yetu naomba ubariki kazi za watu wako baba ninaomba kwa ajili ya familia za watu wako naomba kwa ajili ya baraka ya Mungu na uponyaji katika ndoa naomba kwa ajili ya baraka ya Mungu na uponyaji katika maisha ya watoto wetu na wajukuu wetu katika jina la Yesu kwamba wata Hakuna atakayeishia kuwa mtumishi wa shetani. Baba tunaomba kwa ajili ya hadi ya household salvation. Nyumba yetu yote itaokoka katika jina la Yesu Kristo kwa ajili ya wale ambao hawakujui bado neema iachiliwe juu yao. Baba ninaomba ubariki mkutano huu. Ninaomba ubariki watu wako hawa katika jina la Mungu Baba, Mungu Mwana, Mungu Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Wakati mesi sasa kwa mamlaka niliyopewa kama mgeni rasmi na mnenaji mkuu katika kongamano hili ajili ya Bwana na mwokozi wetu Yesu Kristo ngaza katika jina la Mungu Baba, Mungu Mwana na Mungu Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Amen. Naomba tuketi. May, may we get seated please. Uh, tunaweza kuketi. Tafadhali. Nina kushukuru sana kwa niaba ya watu wote kwa niaba of everyone would love to thank you. Kwa niaba ya viongozi wa full gospel on behalf of the leadership and honestly very much father you have nailed it uh, we give you an opportunity for a word which we have really we are very blessed with it but you also went a mile an extra mile you gave a testimony which something that I we are asking ourselves testimony do we have a testimony today and then nikakimbia high table pale and then i went to the high table then. and i was told kwamba ah uh, I oh, so there wouldn't be time for testimony. But you have done it. Like you And I'm, I'm very happy that every us is uh, very much blessed with this. God bless you, Father. Mungu akubariki sana, Thank you very much. Ninaomba tuendelee kipengele kinachofuata a uh, kipengele kinachofuata membership call ni membership call eh kuita watu kuwa member sasa yes kwa karibisha watu kujiunga na kuwa uh, yes exactly member. that is the word so yes. may i take this opportunity to invite uh, brand kalinga ni mkaribishe brand kalinga veteran top level officer in full gospel in Tanzania ah ni mtu wa muda mrefu katika full gospel Tanzania and brother ah mdogo wangu karibu sana welcome what is this with praise the lord jesus bwana asifiwe praise the lord asante sana thank you very much alivyo tangulia Uh, as he said aliwatambua watumishi wa Mungu uh, he recognized the servants of God uh, sijui kama kuna mtumishi mwingine alikuja kabla hatuja watambua i don't know if there is anyone else who came and we didn't give them a chance to kama upo hapa naomba unyooshe mkono kama mtumishi wa Mungu wewe ni mchungaji maybe you are a pastor an apostle a prophet kama upo prophet naomba mkono maybe you are here you are muhimu sana Asante sana. Thank you. Basi uh, tunawashukuru. Nilisema tunianze hivyo. Uh, I thought I would start it that way. 
Sana Mwana, I think uh, Ron Fai, Asante Sana. Ron Fai at the back there, Asante Sana. Tunapu. Thank you very much. Natambua mchango wako. We recognize your contribution. Asante Sana. Thank you very much. Kazi yangu mimi ni ndogo. Uh, I only have a very small responsibility. Ni kukushawishi. It's just to convince you. Kuwa mwanachama. To be a member. Wa full gospel. Of full gospel. Kama ulishe kuwa mwanachama. If you've ever been a member. Na ujawe ku, 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 kuisha wanachama wako. And you haven't renewed your membership. Leo ni nataka kukushawishi. Today I would like to convince you. Ili uwe mwanachama mpya so that you can be a new member. Kwa hiyo kwanza uh, kuna 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 faida nyingi sana za kuwa mwanachama. There are actually several benefits of being a member. Nitasema machache, I only say a few. Na kwanza kama tulivyosikia kutoka kwa viongozi wetu as we've heard from our leaders kwamba kuna maono ya kuwa na vikundi vya uh, we have a vision of having chapters zaidi ya 2000 2000 of them na mimi ni mmoja wapo nataka wewe ujiunge na mimi leo i am one of them and i would love for you to join me today kati ya faida moja wapo one of the, the many benefits kwanza ni kuwa kati Uh, kuwa kwenye jumuiya ambayo ipo inatumikia na iliyo uh, uh, samani naomba nisome tu U, unakuwa ukiwa jumuiya katika, katika shirika la kitaifa uh, la kimataifa lilio kwenye kiini cha mapenzi ya Mungu ukiwa naomba nirudie ukiwa mwanachama unakuwa uh, mjumuiya au mshirika katika shirika la kimataifa la kimataifa jamani so when you are a member you become a part of uh, the international fellowship yes ambayo ipo kiini chake whose main goal ni kiini cha mapenzi ya Mungu it's the will of god naomba nitoe story hapo i'll give a story here mara ya kwanza The first time nilikuwa na marafiki zangu wengi sana at several of my friends walikuwa wananiita forever living they used to call me GNLD, forever living GNLD kwenye hizi network marketing nani wanazifahamu hizo in those marketing uh, stuff sasa kila nikienda kusikiliza and every time I'll go listen nikawa nashangaa i was surprised nina kuna kitu kiko moyoni mwangu yani inakuwaje ninahubiri nina kuhusu product zaidi ya kumhubiri Kristo. There was something in me that was saying why am I preaching product more than I'm preaching Christ? Na wana pros, wana, 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 wana mipango yao ile ukileta mmoja una, unapanda zaidi. Person, they take you to another level. Niko sielewi. I wasn't understanding it. Na kila nikijaribu and every time I tried nasema hapana siitendei haki nafsi yangu say, I'm not, uh, nafsi yangu doing justice to my soul sasa nilipokuja kuelewa vision when i came to understand the vision ya full gospel of full gospel nikagundua kwamba i realized that the product ambayo tunaiuza au bidhaa tunayoiuza the product that we are selling ni kristo is christ nikasema hii ya kujoin hii and i said i'm going to join in this inasema hii biashara hii that this business ina faida has a profit kwa hiyo ni jumuiya ambayo kiini chake ni kuwaleta watu kwa Kristo so this is a fellowship whose aim is to bring people to Jesus lakini sio hivyo tu kwa sababu tuna kuna ni wale apart from that kuna watu kuna 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 maraisi ambao ni ni ni, ni, ni members wetu because we have presidents who are members wa mungu ambao ni members of god who are members kwa hiyo kama wewe ni mchungaji so kama wewe ni mtume kama wewe ni nabii unaweza kuwa mwanachama you can be a member lakini huwezi kuchukua nafasi ya uongozi but you cannot take a leadership role nilikuwa naongea na kiongozi wangu chuma i was talking to my leader chuma na kwa ananiambia kuna kule Nigeria he told me in Nigeria 
kuna wachungaji mashuhuri kama Ojedepo, Adeboye. Sio mnawafahamu winners chapo. They are those uh, Wote hao ni members. Ones. They are members. Ni life members wa full They are life members of full gospel. Kwa hiyo watumishi wa Mungu pia ambao mpo hapa. So servants of God who are here. Na nafasi kuwa katikati ya 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 fellowship hii. You have an opportunity to be part of this fellowship. Kingine another thing kama faida which is a benefit kwa sababu kuna kuna maprofesa because they are professors kuna wafanya biashara wa business people international business people basi na wewe unaingia kwenye hiyo network you are also able to get inside that network ukiwa na shida yote india ni rahisi tu kuna full gospel member yuko kule when you have a problem maybe in ukiwa india ukiwa na biashara kenya kuna full there. gospel member kule in kenya there are members mambo yanakuwa rahisi kabisa and so things are easy lakini pia kuna kukua kiroho but there is also spiritual growth unajua ni rahisi kumhubiria mtu ukiwa kanisani you know it's very easy to preach to someone when you're in church lakini pia rahisi ukiwa kazini kwako it's not easy to do that at work ukiwa kwenye 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 kwenye, uh, kwenye biashara yako sio when you are in your business it's not easy lakini ukiwa member but when you are a member unajifunza namna ya kuhumuhubiri kristo you learn how to proclaim au namna Christ. ya kuishi maisha ya ya yenye shuhuda or how to live a life with a testimony ukiwa katika kazini kwako when you are a place ni rahisi tu kuwa mwanachama it's easy to be a member lazima uwe unamfahamu Kristo uh, one you should know Christ au umeokoka or you are saved na una maisha ya Kristo and you live a godly life lazima uwe unatamani kujazwa na roho mtakatifu you should desire to be filled with the holy spirit au umejazwa or you are already filled with the spirit lakini tatu but three kuna gharama ambayo ni ndogo sana there is a small cost kwa wanaume ni 10000 uh, kwa mwaka for men it's 10000 lakini kwa wanawake tano kwa mwaka for it's 10000 per year for men and 5000 for women faida ziko nyingi there are many benefits lakini ambayo ni kubwa kuliko yote but uh, the largest of all kwamba tutakuwa tuna waleta watu kwa Kristo is that will be bringing people to Christ kwa mamia in hundreds na hiyo ni kiini and that's the basic cha moyo wa Mungu how the, the, that's the heart of god wewe ni ni mfanyabiashara wewe unafikiri leo unaweza businessman ah kuwa nafasi ya hii fellowship and you feel like you want to be ni naomba unyoshe mkono i raise your hand ah ili tuweze kukupa nafasi will give you the opportunity ya kujaza ile form to fill in the form ili tuweze kujifunza zaidi. Kwa so kama uko hapa uh, naomba unyoshe mkono wako kama we sio mwanachama if you are not a member and you'd like to join sio lazima uwe na hiyo 10000 na hiyo 5000 leo you don't have to have the 10000 or 5000 today ila tunataka kukutambua but we would like to recognize you yes. kama upo katikati yetu naomba unyoshe mkono mkono tukutambue uh, amongst us and you'd like to join please raise your hand asante sana thank you ah asante kuna mikono pale naomba tuwapigie makofi nyosha mkono tu mpaka upate karatasi uh, asante ron soi bishop asante sana Thank you so much. Naomba tumpe mchungaji pale. Asante sana. Naomba mkono, kuna mikono miwili pale. Kuna mkono mwingine sijaona. Asante. Kuna mkono mi, uh, mwingine hapa mbele. Tusimame. Naomba usimame kama unaweza kusimama ili tuwe wakutambue. Asante. Utakaa pale utapokuwa umepata. Kuna nyingine ile pale. Asante. Jamani We, we are the happiest people on earth. Let's clap our hands for our new members. Ah, to apigie makofi hawa ma members wetu wapya. Asante sana. You are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are running pretty much behind time. Ah, tunaendelea tuko nyuma ya muda. Tuko nyuma. Now it is time for investments sasa wakati wa uwekezaji investments ni na this is uh, katika full gospel huwa atufanyi sadaka at full gospel we don't give offerings hakuna offerings tunafanya we do investments 
lakini huwa tunafanya uwekezaji lakini uh, our, our friend from Nigeria rafiki yetu kutoka Nigeria Mr Okeye Edunze and go okay i do it is the one who is going to take us through the investment uh, at atupitisha kwenye hiki kipengele cha uwekezaji most welcome sir good evening everybody za jioni kila moja i'll do this very simple assignment very quickly na nitafanya zoezi hili kwa haraka we have realized that god is also a businessman tumegundua pia mungu ni mfanyabiashara and there are times he would want to negotiate na kuna wakati ambapo anapenda kuwa na mapatano and so in full gospel we always give you the opportunity to negotiate with god na full gospel pia huwa tunapenda kutoa fursa ya wewe kupata about 15 years ago ya pata miaka 15 iliyopita i attended the normal kuhudhuria kikao cha kawaida cha full gospel kama hiki that evening na yule ambaye aliufanya uwekezaji hiyo jioni said so many things alisema vitu vingi but of all the things he said lakini katika vingi alivyovisema the only thing i had was write a check kitu nilichosikia ni kwamba andika check write a check was one of the things he said alisema moja wapo ya vitu alivyosema andika check i was sitting at the back of the hall nilikuwa nimekaa nyuma and the only thing i had was write a check na nilicho my account wala za nyingi kwenye account yangu i had only about 7000 naira nilikuwa kama na naira 1700 so i decided to write a check for 5000 naira nikaamua kuandika cheki ya naira 1500 and i dropped that check inside the office na nikawa nimeiweka kwenye kile cha sadaka two weeks later we came back to the same place for the same meeting ah uh, wiki mbili baadaye tukawa tumerudi pale pale kwa kikao kingine and i sat down at the head table na ikawa nimekaa huko mbele i picked up my prayer request form which Ni, i was to fill nikachukua fomu ya maombi yangu ambayo nilipaswa niijaza as i picked up my pen to write nilipochukua kalamu yangu kuandika i heard god's voice nikaisikia sauti ya mungu and the voice said don't write i have answered Ah uh, nikasikia Mungu akiniambia wala usiandike maombi yako nimekwisha kujibu. It was a very clear voice. Ilikuwa ni sauti ya wazi sana. Don't write I have answered. Usiandike nimeshakujibu. What was my prayer point? Maombi yangu yalikuwa ni yapi? I had two serious prayer points then. Nilikuwa na maombi mawili makubwa wakati huo. Number one was that my marriage was about Six years old and there was no child. Kufikia hapo nilikuwa kwenye ndoa miaka sita na zilikuwa sina mtoto. The second was that I needed an office space. Ya pili nilihitaji ofisi and I did not have money to pay for it. Na sikuwa na fedha ya kuilipia. So, hivyo when I had the voice I dropped my bureau. Niliposikia sauti ile nikachukua nikaweka chini kalamu yangu. Two days after that meeting. Siku mbili baada ya kikao hicho The person I had to pay the money to for a new office. Yule ambaye nilipaswa kumlipa ili anipe ofisi mpya. Came to me, came to my office. Akaja kwangu. And he said he came to collect the money for the new office. Akasema amekuja kupokea fedha kwa ajili ya hiyo ofisi mpya. It was to cost me about 300,000 naira. Ilikuwa inanigharimu kama naira laki tatu. And so when he came I told him to go that I will pay him in the afternoon. And alipokuja nikamwambia aondoke ningemlipa mchana. As he left my office to go. Alipokuwa anaondoka ofisini. I had God's voice again. Nikaisikia sauti ya Mungu tena. He said there is a man you gave a quotation. Akasema an invoice for a job. Kuna mtu ambaye ulimpa nani ya kazi. He said I should go and meet that man. Makadirio ya kazi akaniambia nenda that I should tell him that I know he is not ready to do the job. Na nimemwambia kwamba najua hayuko tayari kufanya ile kazi. But that he should pay me. Na hivyo anapaswa anilipe. Because I need the money for the job. Kwa sababu nahitaji ile pesa kwa ajili ile kazi. And so I drove to the office of that man. Kwa hivyo nikaenda katika ofisi ya mtu yule. I said to him, "Sir." Nikamwambia, "Bwana, I gave you a quotation to do a job for you. Nilikupa makadirio ili nikufanyie kazi. I know you are not ready to do the job. Kazi. But I want you to pay me. Lakini nataka unilipe. The man pulled out his checkbook. He did not Mtu wala hakujibu chochote, akavuta kitabu chake cha cheki. He wrote a check for 250,000 naira. Akaniandikia cheki ya 2.5 na nusu na 2.5 na nusu. And gave to me. Akainipa. 
and I went to pay for my office. Now, this is close to 15 years. I have done business running into millions with that man. I even spoke with him three days ago while we were still in Kenya. From that day till now, that man has not asked for the money, he has not asked for the job. As far as I was concerned, or as far as I am concerned, God wanted to pay for my office. Mungu alitaka kulipia ofisi yangu. Secondly, ya pili, by the time I did that investment I did not have a child. Wakati nilipokuwa nikiwekeza nilikuwa sina hata mtoto. But today I have three children. Lakini leo na watoto watatu. Two boys and one girl. Na wavulana wawili na binti mmoja. And so I want to challenge you this evening. Nataka nikupe changamoto jioni hii. To do something specific. Fanya kitu mahususi that will make God tell you not to write your prayer request that he has answered. I want you to put your hand in your pocket. Or if you don't have cash, you will do a check. Or you would want to transfer into the Convention account. Whichever you want to do. Or you want to make a pledge you will redeem by tomorrow. I would want you to take the envelope in front of you. And do what you would want to do for God now. And I am going to ask God that that same thing he did for me, I will ask him to also do it for you. Because we make bold to say in full gospel, that what God has done for one person, he is able and do for another person. And so if you have your envelope, please put something worthy in that offering. Whatever God tells you to do, I would, want you, to, I would want, want you to do it now before we pray. Are you ready with your offering? If you are ready, can you be on your feet? Let's challenge God this evening and see what he will do. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you for this opportunity. Asante kwa furusa hii. As we give, tunapokutolea, I request, Lord, ninaomba Bwana, that you do the same thing you did for me for these ones. Ufanye yale ulionifanyia, uwafanyie hao. That those prayer requests that came with us to this place, kwamba maombi hayo ambayo yapo mahali hapa, will be answered. Yajibiwe and answered swiftly. Na yajibiwe kwa haraka. Thank you for what you have done. Asante kwa yale uliyofanya. For we pray in Jesus name. Tunaomba kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Can somebody please? Yes, exactly. Collect the envelopes. Tomba mtu azi poke hizo bahasha. Everyone should uh, drop the envelope into these baskets. Aweka bahasha kwenye chombo. As she is collecting the investments. I want to let you know that we are now approaching the very end of our program. We have only two items left. And Sana, the first one is announcement. And the second one, second one is a chapili vote of thanks and a closing prayer. Na maombi ya kuhitimisha. The person who is going to give the announcements is from the coordination committee. Ni katika ile kamati ya ma, maandalizi. Coordinator ni mwalimu Isaac Ara. Ha, ni mwalimu Isaac Ara. And I hope we have Maggie Wawa who is going to do the vote of thanks and the closing 
Naamini mage wao wanaye yupo ili kufanya hitimisho. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Karibu sana Mr. Joni. Good evening. Uh, personally I'm very happy kwa ajili ya mahudhurio haya. Ongereni sana. Congratulations. Nina matangazo machache. I have a few announcements. Uh, tunaendelea na kongamano letu. We are continuing with our conference. Ratiba yetu kwa kesho our schedule for tomorrow. Kesho tutakuwa na chai maalum. We'll have a special tea or breakfast. Tunaita executive breakfast called the executive breakfast. Hii inahusu watu maalum ambao tumewapa nafasi hiyo tumewaalika. Uh, it's for special people that we've invited. Na pia tunaendelea kutoa mwaliko. But also we are still extending more invitation. Ni kuanzia saa moja kasoro robo. Uh, it's from quarter to seven. Hadi saa mbili kamili. Uh, to eight. Tuna nafasi bado ipo. Uh, they still an opportunity kachukue kadi yako ya mwaliko uh, go get your invitation card utalipia 1015 you'll only pay 15000 for that kwa hiyo kamati wana kadi pale nyuma tafadhali usiondoke bila kuchukua kadi uh, the committee has cards at the back so Mi- don't leave without a card mimi na mke wangu tayari tumelipia tayari i and my wife have already paid for that sasa unasubiri nini I don't know what you're waiting for. Naomba uchukue kadi yako. So please get to one of those. Ratiba ya kesho pia kuanzia saa 4 hadi saa 6 kamili kutakuwa na seminar. Uh, tomorrow from 10 to noon there will be a seminar. Kutakuwa na wanenaji wawili. We will have two speakers. Kuna mmoja anaitwa Dr. Stephenson. Uh, one is called Dr. Stephenson kutoka Arusha from Arusha atazungumzia zaidi kwenye malezi ya watoto. He'll be talking more about uh, raising children. Kwa hiyo tuna